Well, man, now just to maybe draw, perhaps to a close, the, the longer historical perspective, though, uh, after the Enlightenment, 18th century Enlightenment, again, this is broad, Western society became notably more uh, secular, science, uh, the idea of progress, uh, and revolutions had taken place, the revolu a political revolution towards democracy, the industrial revolution, um, the religious revolution towards each man can seek his God in mm. his own way, intellectual revolution, Darwin turned the world upside down, that sort of thing. Is there a feeling that Islam did not, part having been, as it were, equal, I'm sorry about the simplicity of this, in about 1700, 1750, is there a sense in which not, by not participating in that, uh, there was some, um, something of what Jonathan was saying, somehow they dropped out of the picture? I think one of the things you've got to remember is this, that when the Enlightenment took place, and when you talk about all of this kind of major transformation which Europe undertook to industrialization, to this kind of modernized society that we more or less understand now, there weren't many people, not just among Muslims, but Chinese, Indians, who actually took it seriously in the first instance. I mean, you've got so many kind of accounts of these clockworks and gadgets being sent to these um, courts of the Chinese emperor, and then sending them back. What a use are they to us? So the first thing is that it wasn't that obvious that something major had happened. Secondly, and what happened is this, once it became very clear that this technical revolution had really changed the relationship of power in the world within Europe, I think Europeans came to worry about how to explain this. And like most successful people, you tend to see this in your terms of your own virtues. So the quest for the European miracle now turned upon what was it so specific about Europe? Was it found in its culture? Was it found in its um, geology? I mean, all of these accounts have been written which have tried to explain this transformation. And in the end, what the effect of these stories have been is to exclude the possibility of anyone else imitating it. Because the idea was that what happened in Europe was due to the unique circumstances of Europeanness, and the only way that people could do this is by actually imitating Europeanness. And that in itself already set up a frontier between what people had to decide. So to be modern, you had to become European eventually. And that's why, for example, you have Mustafa Kemal introducing an act banning the you were wearing in the fez. Somehow there's a relationship with the headgear that you wear in iron and steel production. Now obviously it sounds absurd to us, but it's seriously believed that somehow if you don't imitate yeah. Europeanness, whatever that may mean, it's a very complicated term, you will not be able to achieve whatever Europe has achieved. What you're hearing there, I think, is the roots of what is a, a, a current problem. There seemed to be only one model of modernization in the world that to be in the 21st century was to globalize, to get McDonald's and Nike and, uh, and the rest of it. And so you have globalization seem to mean only Americanization. And when people say now, for example, oh no, there could be an Islamic model of capitalism, democracy, etc. People think that's either a joke or they think there's just a blank space there because no one is yet used to, and maybe the roots of it are what Salman's saying, uh, an alternative non-Western, non-American model of